If you go and look up a photo of a boxer from the 19th century, it's almost certain that the individual will be standing in this goofy stance. While it may look a little silly to modern fans of the sport, this was actually a very effective fighting stance for those wishing to win a 19th century boxing match. The story starts in the early days of the sport. Back then, no one wore headgear or gloves. This was bare-knuckle boxing at its finest. You can imagine that bare-knuckle boxing is a lot more dangerous than glove boxing, but there were actually far fewer head injuries per fight than compared to today. The main reason was that gloves protected the hands. No gloves, no protection from hard skulls. Boxing without gloves is actually widely considered to be safer than boxing with them, among other reasons because bare-knuckle boxers rarely punch one another in the head with full force, so the risk of brain injury or knockout was dramatically lower. If boxers punched the opponent's head as much as they do today, and with as much force, they would break their hands too often. This meant that most boxers rarely went for punches to the face. The majority of boxing tactics concentrated on the torso. Head punches were allowed and did still occur, but a punch to the head usually came out as a 50-50 move. You likely hurt your opponent's head, but also your hand. While it's certainly true that a person utilizing the fisticuff stance would be in trouble in a modern-day boxing match, a modern boxer would likely be in just as much trouble sparring off against a pugilistic champ from the golden age of boxing, if they boxed by the rules of the period. As for why, most pertinent here is the fact that neither boxer would be wearing gloves in such a classic match. As a result, the boxing stance of the era emphasized keeping distance between yourself and your opponent, usually with both arms outstretched. Later, it switched to just keeping your left hand outstretched. This not only made for a potential minor offensive weapon your opponent had to worry about if they tried to come in close, but also was great for teasing out and defending against jabs and glancing blows from a distance. The tucked right hand being held close helped defense against counterhooks and body blows when your opponent managed to get past your left arm. And of course, the arm was cocked and ready to deliver more powerful blows. Keeping both arms tucked would simply allow your opponent to easy grappling access to your main trunk. Back then, fighters fought a few times a week so they had little time to recover. Seriously damaging their hands would mean they couldn't fight for a few weeks. They relied on these fights to feed their families, and so couldn't afford to take silly risks. This means the boxing stance we see in the photos makes a lot of sense. The pose protects the body but leaves the face open. Yet still, the one hand stretched out and one hand by the side is still a little strange. Back then, grappling was a large part of boxing, and if you allowed your opponent to come too close, they could grab your torso too easily. By keeping one hand outstretched, it is protected from a grab. By keeping your other hand close to your stomach, it protected it from a punch, and it was ready to strike itself. The right hand being the dominant hand for most fighters meant it was ready for a swift uppercut or hook. Looking at the picture, it now makes a lot more sense. Even the strange mustaches look a little cooler. Daniel Mendoza is the fighter credited with this pose as prior to his fight career, most fighters were attacking with little thought. He was a short fighter, but he went undefeated for a long time due to his superior tactics. He later wrote a book on the subject called The Art of Boxing. His tactics and approach to the game became the playbook for the fighters of the 19th century and are reflected in every photo we see today.